Hello friends, welcome back to SQL with Manoj. In my previous videos, I talked about integrity constraints and, and we saw how the integrity constraints help us in maintaining the integrity of our data in SQL Server database. Then in my next videos, I talked about the integrity constraint types like the primary key constraint and unique key constraint. So today in this video, I'm going to talk about the foreign key constraint. So what it is and how exactly it helps us to attain the data integrity in our SQL Server database. Okay. So first of all, let's see what exactly is a foreign key constraint. So with these points, let me tell you what exactly is a foreign key constraint. So foreign key is nothing but a constraint that establishes and enforces a link between the data of two tables. Okay. So it just not only link the two tables, but it also enforces the link between the data of the two tables. Okay. We'll see how. You can create a foreign key by defining a foreign key constraint while creating or altering a table. Okay, so if you are creating a new table, then you create, then you can create a foreign key constraint while creating the table itself. Or if you already have a table created, you can specify alter table command and add a foreign key constraint. Okay, so you can define a foreign key in a table that points to a primary key or a unique key to an another table. Okay, like employee and department. I'll take an example of employee and department tables here and I'll show you how to establish a foreign key relationship between these two tables. I'll take you to SSMS to show you the demo. I'm using a database that I created for my usage that is testman DB. You can create the database with the name of your choice and then as I told you earlier, I have a department table and I have an employee table. Okay, this is the structure of my department table department ID, the data type of integer. It is a primary key in my department table and I have set it as identity so that I don't have to give the values. So it will take the value on its own. The second column is the department name that will tell me okay which department it is and is active column that will tell me okay the, the record is active or not. Okay. It might have few more columns but, I, but for this example I'm taking these few columns only. Okay. So my department table is created over here. Okay, so this is the department table created over here. You can see the golden key coming here. This is the department ID notified as a PK here. And if you expand the key section, the same name comes over here. So this uh, SQL server create, uh, picks up an automated name by taking some random uh, numbers and characters. Fine. You can even create a named constraint rather than this by specifying the name of your choice over here. So I'll be inserting four records over here. These are the four departments, HR, Finance, Admin and IT. Okay, and let's see how my table looks like now. So I have a department ID from 101 to 104 that have department name, HR, Finance, Admin and IT and is active as the column that tells that, okay, the table, these all records in the table are active. Okay, now comes my employee table. So there are various methods how we can create a foreign key constraint in a particular table and I will show you how and these differ very slightly. So my employee table looks like this. Primary key column is the employee ID okay, of type integer and I have set it as identity column again so it will take the values on its own. Employee name, then uh, gender, then the department ID. So as you can see here in my department table I have a department ID column. Similarly in my employee table I am having the department ID column. Okay. So it will tell that okay this employee works in this department and this department ID column helps me in connecting to the above department table okay, with this particular column. Okay. Now how can I do that? So when you are defining your foreign key column that is the department ID. So you have to define the data type and its uh, nullability or the non-nullability. Then with the foreign key keyword you have to specify references and which table and column it is going to reference comes over here. The table name and the primary key column name of that particular table. Okay. So it goes like this foreign key references the table name and the primary key column department and department ID okay and then rest of the other columns so here as you can see here we are specifying the foreign key constraint in line with the column name okay so let's go ahead and do that right and if I refresh the table list it will show me the employee table and if I expand the columns it will show me the golden key that is the employee ID that is PK and the gray I gray key that is the department ID and the FK and, ex and if I expand the key folder it shows me both of the keys the pk and the fk if you notice here the foreign key name is automatically chosen by sql server by some random numbers and characters okay now you can specify your named constraint by just putting a constraint and the foreign key name over here 
so let me drop this table and recreate with a named constraint okay so instead of creating the foreign key column on its, on its own it will take the column name provided by you okay so this is the name f key underscore f key underscore employee id underscore department id so it is taking the same name okay now this is one kind of method right that is giving the foreign key relationship in line with the column name okay the second method is okay mentioning the foreign key constraint explicitly right uh, not in line with your column name okay so it happens like this your column names will be so many and you know you can add foreign key references at the later part okay so with this what you have to do is you have to define the foreign key with the originating foreign key that is your source table of your employee okay that is your child table that is employee and the department id then reference is department table and the department id okay so foreign key department id this department id points to the employee department id okay then reference is department and department id points to the parent department table and the department id column okay so here also it will create a similar kind of key with you know with the name on its own and if you want to create a, a named constraint similarly you can put a constraint and the name uh, before the foreign key definition right like this so let me let me drop this and recreate it again okay so if you try to again refresh and expand it you will see the column name of your choice coming over here okay third is when you already have a table created without any foreign key references if you can see here I don't have any foreign key references provided here so what you can do is you can provide an alter table statement okay and then add a constraint with the constraint name foreign key with the foreign key ID name and the references to the target table and the target primary key column ID okay or the parent table or the parent key column ID so uh, this thing you can do via this script also or via SSMS let me show you how you can do via SSMS okay so let me refresh it and you know you can see we don't have any foreign key right now so you can right click on the table and click on design okay and the table designer will come over here so to specify a foreign key on the department id what you can do is you can right click over here okay and go to relationships right so click on relationships and you will see an add button click on the add button okay and then here click on here tables and columns specification okay click on the ellipsis button right you will get a pop-up okay and what is the primary key table right primary key table is the department table and the column is department id and the foreign key table is your employee right and the key column is the foreign key column is the department id okay now if you click ok okay and then close right and now what you can do is you can either save it from here it will create the foreign key or you can right click and generate change script okay so what it will do it will create an alter script you can just omit this and no, no need to check this so this is the main part that we need this is the main thing that we need okay alter I'm going to copy this okay this is the main statement that will add the call add the foreign key constraint on my table okay so what I'll do is I'll I'll copy this okay I'll click no and I'm I'm not going to create a foreign key from here okay if you want to create you can click yes okay or you can click save okay so I'm not going to create it here from here so I'm going to close it and I'll click no don't save okay so I'll going I'm going to paste this over here so as you can see here the statement that is generated by SSMS is very similar and same to this okay other than some default parts right so alter table employ add constraint alter table employ add constraint then the foreign key constraint name and the foreign key constraint name foreign key then the department ID then references department and department ID then the department ID references department IDs right everything is same it is just they have the SSMS has added this thing this by default you can remove it okay and if and after removing it it both of the statements are same okay so you can run either of the statement because both of them are same so I'm going to you know execute this one okay so if I refresh it you can see a gray key added here that is the department ID is now a foreign key right and if you expand keys you can see 
FK employee department, right? So the FK employees department is specified over here. That's why the name is like this. Otherwise, if I had added, if I had executed this script, the name would be like this FK underscore employee ID underscore department ID. Okay. So let's go ahead now and insert the values in this particular table, employee table. So in the employee table, employee ID is the entity and is active is the default. So you don't need to explicitly enter values in these two columns. So I need to enter values only in these particular three columns, right? So my insert statement goes like this employee name, gender and department ID. And I'll be using all these four departments, one, 101, 102, 103 and 104. Okay. The employee name, gender and the department ID. Okay. I'll execute all four of them. And let's see what I'll get. Right. So this is how my employee table looks like. So the employee ID, employee name, then the gender, then department, then is active. Okay. So this is how, you know, you set up a foreign key relationship in your table. Now let's see how to attain the referential integrity property by adding this foreign key. Okay. Let's say I want to add a new record on the employee table for Mary J and uh, belonging to a 105 department ID, right? So 105 department does not exist. So if you see above, I have a department select staff from department. I only have these four departments, right? From 101 to 104. Now, if I want to add a employee to this 105 department, I'll get an error, right? So the error is the insert statement conflicted with the foreign key constraint. The conflict occurred in database, test database department table and the column department ID. The statement has been terminated. Now, referential integrity. So, so uh, let me take you back to the definition, right? So what exactly this referential integrity gives us? So the foreign key constraint enforces the referential integrity by not, by not allowing values in the child table outside from the domain of the parent table. So if you see here, the domain of the parent table had only values from 101 to 104. So it didn't allow to use the value in the child table that was 105. Okay. Now this also disallows any changes to the parent table, like deleting any row or modifying PK value in the parent table. Okay. So now if I want to delete any value, any row from uh, my parent table, that is a department table, it won't allow me to do it. Okay. Let's say if I want to delete one department out of the four departments, so it won't let me do that because one to two is in use. Right. So it is in use. So it will not let me delete this department or OK. Let me delete all the records without the where clause. It, it won't let me do that. Right. Now let me drop the table itself. Okay? It, it won't even let me drop the table. Right. So this is how, you know, foreign key helps us with the referential integrity. Right. So this is all nothing but the referential integrity that makes sure the integrity of your date of your data is safe in SQL Server database. Right. Okay, so what are the allowed updates? So let's see in your department table, you have these uh, four departments. Now let's say you want to modify the name of this HR department, right, to human resource. So you can easily do this because this is allowed, right? So any changes to the primary key of the parent table, okay, of the foreign key table is not allowed, but you can modify the non key columns. This key column modification is not allowed and the removal of this whole particular record is not allowed, okay? only the modification of non key columns will be allowed like the way you modified HR to human resource. Okay. So uh, if you just do a select, you can see all these results. Okay. Now, even if you want to drop the department table, you cannot drop it first because uh, it says that could not drop department because it is referenced by a foreign key constraint. So in order to drop the department table, you have to drop all the child tables belonging to this department table, like the employee table. Okay, so if there is any other table like the employee table, you have to delete all those tables, then only you can drop the department table. Like there is only one table right now, employee, and we have already dropped it. So now I can easily drop the parent department table. Okay, so this is how you set up a foreign key constraint in a particular table and a column. And this is how you can enforce referential integrity by creating a foreign key constraint and make sure the data integrity of your database is maintained. Okay. So this is all in this video. So in my next video, I'll talk more about the other types of integrity constraints. And uh, please like the video if you really like it. Please let me know your suggestions and comments. And please let me know if you want me to cover something. Okay. And uh, 
uh, thanks for watching please subscribe by subscribing you will get to know about the latest videos that i create here and thanks a lot have a nice day thank you